more about the death ballads, the folklorist Neuch Prolutsky actually has a volume. Half of the volume is on death ballads, songs about meeting the angel of death. Again, the ballad usually is a dialogue. Most of the ballad is a dialogue. So when you have death ballads, usually it's the person dying with the angel of death. Now, the Jewish concept of the angel of death is varied and is very complicated. But in many of the Yiddish death ballads, death is grand Zayda. He's referred to Zayda, an old man, calling you, come to me. You know, The old man is calling the person dying, come with me to the other world, which doesn't really fit into traditional concepts of the angel of death. I sort of assume it comes from the non-Jewish world, but it was readily accepted. It implies that I think, you know, old men can be pretty creepy and scary. <laughs> and people's grandparents can actually call you, you know, be, serve as the angel of death. The ballad form allows for a dramatic action like that. In the lecture, I sort of compared it to the lyric love songs, which the emotion is important. But in the ballad, it's actually a dramatic, usually one event that is happening. Would these songs be performed with instrumental accompaniment in other circumstances? No. <laughs> in other words, traditionally, usually, again, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to avoid the word traditionally, but this kind of ballad I couldn't imagine being performed with an instrument. And in general, Yiddish folk song was sung without instrumentation. When we see a movie like Yidel Mitten Fiedel, where they're, where they're playing in the streets, yes, street musicians, beggars, would have a fiddle, would have an organ grinder, the older might have a hurdy-gurdy in the old days. They would be wandering. But in terms of folk singing in a family, only in the 20th century do you start getting guitars and mandolins. So yes, in the 20th century, yes. But I don't think the older tradition has instrumentation. So why does he say it calls to the musicians? Probably He's, they were performing on different occasions, like marriage ceremonies. and. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure about the. Uh, Livia's, uh, um, the funerals know, and stuff. Funerals, yeah. No. I mean, the funerals, no, but the, the klezmorim were the professional musicians. So let's make the distinction between klezmorim, who are actually the paid musicians, and the street musicians. The, the film Yidel Mitten Fiedel sort of confuses things because they're both. They're both street musicians and paid professional musicians. But I think in the Shtetl life, there was the klezmer, the klezmorim who were paid for weddings. Usually it was mainly weddings, um, but other ceremonies as well. And then there were the, a guy with a fiddle going into the courtyard and asking people to drop down money. Um, yeah, that first verse is intriguing. I'm not sure it reflects a historical reality, but it, it does make for a great ballad, and, as, and that sort of sets, the, sets the, the scene there. And I also, in the lecture, I mentioned that in fact, it was women who were mainly the singers of folk songs. I think that's pan-Western European would be that the women really were singing these kinds of songs. But this is what I consider a gem from the Stonehill. So these death ballads wouldn't necessarily have been sung on someone's deathbed, per se. They're just sort of visiting that as, you know, going, transporting you to the moment of someone meeting with the angel of death. Or it could be. I don't think anyone would sing this at the deathbed. Okay. I don't know. I don't think so. I think when people got together and the singing turned to sort of sad topics, someone would sing this song. I once gave a lecture in, uh, in uh, Scotland. And the guy asked me, is there a major theme of Yiddish folk song? And he said, well, you know, for Irish folk song, it was emigration. So many Irish folk songs are about emigrating and leaving the country. And he asked me what was the major theme of Yiddish folk song. And I thought, first of all, we don't have enough material almost to really say something like that. But based on individual singers, women singers, I said orphans, <laughs> the plight of orphans. I mean, there was so many songs about orphans. And so you just get the sense that there was a time to sing happy songs and there was a time to sing sad songs. And I think a lot of these songs have that issue. And I just mentioned about the orphans. Who's going to take care of these children? People died at much younger ages. Quite often we're left with no one. I've interviewed Jews from Eastern Europe who the parents died, he was alone, and the funeral was over, and 
he was there by himself, a child of like 10 years old in the street, all by himself. You know, he lived on the street for a couple of months until he was finally taken into a cor orphanage. But that happened. It's hard for us to imagine things because we, you know, we sort of romanticize the shtetl as everyone taking care of everybody and like, you know, but people fell through the cracks, so to speak. And uh, so this is reflected in song.